Good morning. My name is Mark Yusuf, and my topic is talking about the nucleus and its content related to their function. And the supervisor in my assignment is Dr. Dalia Fatih. The nucleus is non-membranous bounded structure which is composed of proteins and nucleic acids. And we can find it under the EM, we can find the ultra structures and the components of the nucleus, which are three major components. Fibrillar center and dense fibrillar components and granular components. Now, the nucleus is present inside the nucleus and it represents about 25% of the ratio of the nuclear space. The three major components have other names where the fibrillar center is called pars amorpha, which contains the DNA, which is responsible for the formation of the ribonucleic acids formed inside it. Dense fibrillar component, it's called pars fibrosa, okay, which contain the newly synthesized RNAs binded to the proteins. And pars granulosa, which is the granular component, it's composed of RNAs bounded to proteins and ready for assembling to form the ribosomes. Where the ribosomes, are, the R, ribosomal RNA is formed and assembled completely inside the nucleus. This is the three-dimensional picture for the right nucleus inside the nucleus. This is a cartoonized picture showing the function of the nucleus, where it acts as a factory for the formation of the ribosomal RNA. Where the, these are the ribosomal RNA and this is the factory. Now I'm going to talk about a general overview about the components of the nucleic acid, which are DNA and RNA. I'm going to talk about the similarities and differences between them that are going to specify about the content inside the nucleus. Where the DNA is present in double helix and it's formed of nucleotides. What, are meant, what is meant by nucleotides? Nucleotides are nitrogenous bases with pentose sugar and phosphate group. Where the RNA is only single stranded and contain also se sequence of nucleotides. Well, the difference between the RNA and the DNA is that cymene, which is one of the nucleotides, the DNA is replaced by uracil. This shows how the RNA is synthesized, where it's a DNA-dependent reaction formed with specific enzymes where the RNA polymerase is responsible for the formation of the RNA. Where the mechanism, first of all, I have enzymes which bind to a promoter sequence on the DNA. What's meant by a promoter sequence? It is a sequence which initiates the process of the RNA synthesis. Where then it binds helicase to the DNA strand, causes the unwinding of the DNA strand, so, there is a space through which the RNA can be synthesized. Where RNA polymerase now is going to assemble a complementary nucleotide to form the RNA using the DNA strand as a template. Then, DNA also is responsible for the termination of the ribosomal RNA synthesis through a termination sequence. Where the RNA polymerase work on a direction 5 to 3 on the newly synthesized train. Now I'm going to talk about the DNA component inside the nucleus, which is called ribosomal DNA, because it's used for the synthesis of ribosomal RNA. Where? By the action of specific enzymes on the DNA template strand, it forms 
four subunits or four molecule structures which are responsible for the formation of the ribosome, which are 18 srRNA and 5.8 and 28 and 5. Great, three of them are the, the first three ones are synthesized by the same enzyme, which is RNA polymerase 1, while RNA polymerase, polymerase 3 synthesized 5S, where S is responsible for the sedimentation rate in the centrifuge of these particles. Where these four particles are responsible for the formation of the two subunits of the ribosome, where the large ribosomal subunit is formed of the 18 and 5.8. Sorry, 5.8 and 5 and 28 as well, the small ribosomal front only of 18 as ribosomal RNA. This is the role of RNA, for example, in the body. They act as proteins, where they catalyze some biological reactions, control the gene expressions, and also the sensing and communicating response to this to the uh, cellular signals. Also, ribosomal RNA has an importance in the medicine, which is used in the formation of many antibiotics. For example, erythrosomomycin and ricin and sarsin. There are examples for these antibiotics. Okay. This is an EM picture for the ribosomes, where they are present in spiral and in rosette formations. This is another colored one. This shows the rosette formation and these show the spiral formation where the ribosomes are attached to mRNA. Also ribosomes are present bounded to rough endoplasmic reticulum where it's gonna be going to be discussed later what's the importance of this. Here, the structure of the RNA. We mentioned before that it consists of two subunits where I'm going to talk about a binding unit present on the ribosomal RNA where it contains three sites, A site and B site, E site. The A site is responsible for the binding of the amino acid tRNA which is the tRNA carrying an activated amino acid. Then the, the B site is for the binding of the peptidyl tRNA, which is the tRNA carrying the polypeptide chain. Then the A site is the site for the exit of the tRNA after finishing its function. This is another one showing the mechanism that the tRNA comes and binds to the A site, then it's gonna move, the ribosome is gonna move on the mRNA strand, so the site is gonna be changed from A site to B site, then in a specific sequence it's gonna reach the E site and be expelled and it continues so on. One of the most important functions of the ribosomes is the protein synthesis. Now, so to begin the protein synthesis, I, I must have the two ribosomal subunits bind to each other and binding also with the mRNA, which is the messenger RNA, which, carry, which consists of specific arrangement of nucleotides, coding for the arrangement of the amino acids placed on the polypeptide chain, where it's said that the mRNA is sandwiched between the two subunits of the RNA ribosome. This is another picture showing the same mechanism. This picture is showing the mechanism of the protein synthesis at all. Where, first of all, mRNA binds to the small ribosomal subunit, and then the tRNA carrying the thionine amino acid, because the anticodon present on the mRNA is complementary to the initiation codon present. Then, it's going to bite the large ribosomal subunit and it's now ready for the protein synthesis. Okay. Now, the first, the first tRNA is going to bind to the B site. The first one is going to bind to the B site, then 
So on the RNA, we bind to the A side of the polypeptide chain with B4 inducing peptidyl transferase. <laughs> then after the protein is synthesized, where the ribosome is placed on the rough endoplasmic reticulum, the protein has a signal peptide arrangement which leads to the movement of the polypeptide chain to the rough endoplasmic reticulum through which it's transferred to the Golgi apparatus and secretory vesicles where it undergoes specific modulations to be a functional protein. Finally, this is a general overview about all the topic where the DNA inside the nucleus is used for the transcription and the formation of the RNAs. Then it's going to get out to the cytoplasm where it binds with the other types of the RNAs and, and begin the process of protein synthesis. Thank you.